Okay, welcome to our Special Education Technology Center webinar on building your classroom library. Um, this webinar is kind of based on um, what we've been talking about with the Comprehensive Literacy for All um, book by Copenhagen and Erickson. So um, for those of you who have been joining us for that, you know what we're talking about. Um, otherwise, we've been doing a book study on this awesome book, and um, the last chapter we were reading about was um, self-directed reading for students, and um, part of that was about building your own classroom library and how you can do that, making sure that it's um, accessible for students, that it's a appropriate or respectful um, for both culturally um, appropriate or or relevant for students and age respectful and um, and different ideas for for kids for their interests um, so we put together this list we will send it to you guys so you have it as well but um, what we're gonna talk about today is we'll go through some no-tech or low-tech ideas for building your classroom library. We'll talk about um, some high-tech or online ideas and um, technology to access or engage with, with the books. Okay, Brenda, anything to add before we get going? No, that sounds good. I think we're just going to try to demo as many as we can in this short period of time. So um, we don't have a big um, PowerPoint agenda. We, we want to just demo as much as we can fit into a short period of time. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so right off the bat, looking at no tech or low tech ideas, um, I um, will come back to this, this photo when we talk about some online library ideas. But um, in the book, they talk about funding for your classroom library. And in our last book study session, we talked about um, how this might have changed a little bit since going online. Um, there are a lot of online things that are free and accessible, um, but still you want some, some actual books. So um, a lot of people have had success with grants or little mini grants. Um, I've had success with special ed PTSA grants. Um, there's donors choose. Um, and a lot of these things you can find for free online. So um, Teachers Pay Teachers is a great resource for um, access to online books or materials that go with books and practical AAC as well. And I'll share a couple below. Um, one thing that we just wanted to touch on was kind of the organization and around reading goals. Um, so just as we're looking at building our classroom library, you know, we talked about self-directed reading. So access to books that students can access themselves, um, read themselves and for what for what is their goal. So maybe comprehension, that's been a big topic that we've been talking about, um, silent reading, reading to themselves and comprehension. but. Um, thinking about what, what your goal is for the reading and for your books in your library is really important. Um, so, and we all know that and we have our IEP goals about that. Um, we can align with the teacher's goals, the gen ed goals, but sometimes it's nice to also post them certain places. Um, so I was thinking about a classroom that I worked in where they had each student's goal for different uh, for reading, for different types of reading, but um, posted. And in the book, um, Comprehensive Literacy for All book, they talk about like the purpose for reading. You're gonna anchor their background knowledge and you're gonna give them a purpose for what they're doing while they're reading to themselves. And then you have an, act, um, an activity where you're checking in on what they've learned and what they did, read. But um, so it could be that you also have you're posting your purpose for the goal in your classroom. Um, but in the classroom I'm thinking about, they had um, something like a purpose that was for the whole class for that day, for their reading 
activity, independent reading activity. And then at each student's desk, they had a little note card with what their specific reading goal is, just to help remember. And then also for um, like when we come in as an SLP or a paraeducator, we can kind of easily know what that student's goal is um, in addition to what the classroom purpose is. Um, the only thing I wanted to add about the low tech is, um, or actual physical books is, you know, we think about kids that might need alternative access to books and automatically sometimes we go to switches and then that results in more of a high tech book. But um, if you're doing a low tech book, something that's really just like no tech at all, but, but actually can help those with poor motor skills access books is to um, put the little spacers between the pages so that kids can potentially with, if they have a more gross motor movement, they can still turn the pages on their own. If you put like a little piece of sponge or a little piece of foam between each page, it works better on, on board books and books that have thicker pages, but there are, are really cheap, no tech solutions to access with physical books as well. Good point. And I know people will buy like the little, um, the little things that you put on the bottom of your chair so they don't wreck your hardwood. Right. Um, the fluffer. Like belt. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good point. So, um, Keep it on the idea of, of your organization and reading goals. Just really quickly, um, there's this would be more of a shared reading example, but from um, Practical AAC, they've got like a lesson planning form for brown bear, brown bear. You can find so much stuff on Practical AAC. Um, and then it's just kind of reminding you and it has the page numbers. So these are things that you might look like, look for on certain pages. Um, on a Project Core website, there are a lot of teaching materials and one of those things is um, instructional planning forms and so you have weekly literacy planning forms daily routine planning forms um, a lot of good things to check out here depending on what your goal is um, including independent reading um, so um let's see Can you one of those and show us what it looks like oh sure Let's see. So um, I want to get to action planning form. Let's see. So I, the thing I like about this one, this is like just a worksheet to help you get organized on um, what you're working on. So you could have your component, your activity, um, maybe you're doing independent reading or, you know, a lot of these are like for, if we're doing shared reading, what's our activity, who's gonna be doing that? What are the materials we need? Um, I like this part, you can have a priority. How important is this? But what I was looking at is not that one. Um, weekly literacy activity planning forms. There's the daily one too. Maybe I just missed that one. And if you guys have used this, let me know. Um, just a way to structure um, core vocabulary. So, you know, as we're reading this, we're, we can use the, um, the student's communication system. We can use low-tech core boards. Um, so this is looking at a book, reading it several times, and then um, documenting on which page you have your core based comments. So if you're using something like um, CAR um, to um, increase interactions during shared reading, this is something you might use. It goes into predictable chart writing. One thing I like about all of the organizational tools is I find that it, I feel like it helps perhaps um, provide a, strength, a framework for your special education teachers that are not only managing a caseload of kids that are learning to read, but they may have four or five paraeducators and they're, and being able to manage what is, what is every paraeducator doing during a reading activity and providing them structure um, creates um, 
accountability, although I don't know that there's a lot of paraeducators that are shrugging accountability, it's more, it's more that it's just like, I know what I'm doing next. And you're, we're providing clarity for that time. It's, it's called independent reading, but we do need, but there's so much more that we need to support. So, um, so what does support look like for this kid? What does it look like for that kid? And being able to glance at a form like that. So you know who you're responsible to support and what, what those tools are. So I like that not only for our kids, but for our para support. Mm -hmm. We talk about this, Brenda. Yeah. So this is books with reoccurring phrases. So when we want to do a book that had that for, um, a child that is nonverbal or not functionally verbal and you want them to be part of the reading activity, you might be initially drawn to books that have a phrase that reoccurs over and over again. And so um, I actually have the top one there and it's Pout Pout Fish. And when you read Pout Pout Fish, um, there's a little rhyme to it. So you could read it a couple of times with different focus, but um, so I'm a pop pop fish with a pop pop face and I spread my drawers all over the place and then it says blab, blab, blab. So there's all kinds of literacy opportunities here as far as that's a lot, that's a short word. This is a medium word. This is a really long word, right? I mean, just awareness of those kinds of things to begin with. But, um, so you read through the story and he meets different characters, but he comes back with that same situation. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread my jury reels all over the place. And then we have some reoccurring um, length of word each issue. So what I do with this is I get my step by step and I um, turn it on and I press my record button until it lights up. And then I know that I can record. I've done this a hundred times, but just in case I didn't do it right. I'll show you how this works. So I go, I press and hold and record while I'm holding down and then I lift off. You'll hear beeps, so it should be intuitive. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread my dreary rearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. And then I press my record when I'm done. And now when I read the first part of the book, deep in the water where the fish hang out, lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. And then I just wait. It's their turn. It's silent. It, it doesn't take, it takes less than 10 seconds for a child to realize it's my turn to read. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread my dreary weary all over the place. And again, if you're focusing on Let's listen for the B. Let's listen for the short word. Blub. 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 Awesome. So this could be done in an individual or a group setting where you're passing this around. The other thing I like about the step-by-step that there's a switch jack. So if you need to have something up on a different switch location, um, you could you can plug it in here and place it here because sometimes putting something this big and bulky right by them is a little big, makes, makes somebody defensive. So this can be your base, but not necessarily the switch they're hitting depending on their access method. But what we were looking for is books that have reoccurring phrases. How, and there's a list of 13 of them and you know way more. There's so many more since I made that handout that I'm like, I can't believe I didn't put this or that. But as you look at working on this with older kids, um, you might, you may have to embed a, um, a switch opportunity. So you may have to embed something that's like, I like that, or I don't like that, or um, I know about that. So when you're reading a book like Harry Potter and maybe it, Maybe they're talking about, um, oh, owls, because, you know, oh, the owl brought a letter. They get the hits the switch and it says, I know about that. And you say, what do you know about? Do you know about letters or do you know about the mailman bringing letters or do you know about owls, right? So it's a way for them to interject and say something that gets you talking about the book. So um, as you get into more complicated book topics, you can do more general, or I have a question, could be one. Um, so you can still use a single message button with um, a, a phrase that made it's broad enough that it could go in on any page. Thank you. Um, 
Let's see. So a few other things in our low tech or no tech um, March book madness. I don't know if any of you have used this idea before, but it's like the um, the college basketball bracket, but with books. And so you have um, they give a list of books. There's picture books middle grade novels and young adult novels. And then you read them um, off, like classes will do this together, but you could do it individually. And then you you rate the books and then one moves up to the next bracket. And then at the end you have a, a winner two against um, each other and then a winner. So it's, it's a fun way. Cause again, when we're thinking about reading we want engagement, we want it to be fun and meaningful. So this is a really fun way to, to build up that excitement for reading. Um, as I looked at this too, I thought it would be fun to have kids pick their favorite books and come up with, maybe you have 16 students and they each pick their favorite and then they're all gonna go up against each other um, because you, have, you end up having brackets of books of four books. Or as an SLP, you could have your books and another SLP could have hers or first grade class versus first grade class. You could have up to four classrooms doing it. I think you could easily be doing this virtual if that's what your if that's what your setting is because you're looking at these books and if you're doing short picture books you might be able to read two books in one day and have them compare or two books in one week and have them compare. You may need to start this in January in order to actually have the final in March because of how many books you're asked, especially as you get into middle school and high school where the books are more like novels and your class may be required to read two and vote on one so that or but ultimately they're going to read four because when, depending on what book wins each bracket, you have to read the other book to know. So um, giving them enough time to get through it, depending on the type of book, but I think it could be done virtually and be, be um, followed virtually. Like you could click this link to see who's winning, who's ahead, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I love this idea. And um, I'm, I'm hoping to figure out how to do that even with my own smaller setting. Mm -hmm. Good idea. And virtually um, kids could do a book snap about the books that they're reading. So if you've been part of the um, part of our book study, a book snap is like just one page. We've been doing it in a Google slides, um, one slide with um, either like screenshots from the book or just things that stood out and you can add whatever you want, pictures, things that stand out to you from the book. So it's a little different than doing like a whole book report. Just a quick glimpse at what that book's all about. Maybe they could do that about that too. I know in classrooms or in schools where I've seen this, they have like the whole bracket posted on the wall and a, a, you know, a picture of the front of the book. And it's so fun because um maybe you haven't seen that book before, or maybe you have, but you're kind of seeing like, oh, people really liked that book. Maybe I'll check it out, even though I hadn't really thought about reading it before. Um, quickly, other ideas the, for preschool, the Tell Me program. Um, things in this list marked with an asterisk means that we do have it in our special ed tech center lending library, and there's a link to that at the end of this document, which you'll get. Um, and this is a really a way to bring core vocabulary um, into throughout the day in classrooms and incorporate and um, but they're using a lot of common books that you may already have. Um, Tell me mas, this is new um, Spanish core vocabulary. I'll just open it up. I don't know if um, any of you have used this yet. Yeah, I want to um, share my screen and reflect touch chat and just show how I use it. Great. And Oops. Tommy Moss is really nice. I, I'm stationed in Arizona and we have a lot of kids that's Spanish speaking and a lot of kids Spanish speaking that are at home right now, which means um, that Tommy Moss, uh, is it Tommy Moss? I don't know, um, is more effective when, with the parents that are not as fluent in English. So let me just share my screen really quickly. That's what I was thinking. It's great for this time when kids are home. Right. So within touch chat, if you go to groups and you go to reading, which is dead center there, and then the red button on the far right that says early books, these are actually um, all the tell me books. If you can see that red button on the right says tell me early books. So that tell me program, if you were, if you were to build a library, right, that's what this webinar is on. You wanted to buy eight preschool books you you may decide to do these eight because some of the AAC is already built in. So let me just explain this a little bit. Um, Brown Bears are probably one of the, um, 
probably one of the easiest ones to, because everyone's familiar with the story. So there's two levels of brown bear. And if I open up brown, brown bear, bear, you're going to see that they can, they're going to be able to say brown bear, brown bear. And then they're going to have, then they can go and say, um, brown bear, brown bear. What, what do, do you, you, and then notice where C is. It's uh, let's see if we do a little Tetris here. It's the fourth one down, the second one from the right. C. Right. So once you're telling the story using your AAC, if you were to go all the way home and go into your actions, fourth one down, second one over is also C. So what they've done in touch chat is they've used these tell me books and they've put, they put, um, um, book specific pages together, but they've been very intentional about the location of the icons so that when you're in other areas of the AAC, it's consistent. Let me show you another way. So if I go back to groups and reading early books and we go to books, brown bear level two, brown bear. you'll see the colors are red, orange, yellow there. And so when later, when you're in the device and you're just looking for colors, they're also in the same order. So you've learned a motor plan with by telling a story and now you um, know that same motor plan when you're using um, color words in a different context. So on that second level of brown, brown bear, bear, now we have to combine, right? We have to find brown, brown. and then we have to find the bear. bear. So we're meeting some AAC goals as well as um, building consistency with motor plans and using all of those core words that are tend to be on every page, right? So what, what do, do you, you see, see. So, um, I see a red bird looking. Oh boy. At me. So that's kind of how it works when you're doing tell me and you have AAC. Um, so if you're looking to build a preschool classroom and you have those that are not, not functionally verbal and using AAC, this tell me book has this, a lot of application with touch chat as well. Thanks, Brenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look and see what's next. Um, I think we go into a little bit about um, asking your school librarian for ideas is always a good idea. Um, they have so much information and they know so much. So think about what your goals are. What are high topic interests you can ask about? Things that are age considerate um, or culturally or linguistically relevant. These two slides next are from our book study and um, give ideas of different types of books um, or genres that you may look into. Yeah, what I liked about that list is it just makes you think about um, things that you may not have thought about before. We can get stuck on actual novel, actual stories, or just nonfiction, nonfiction versus fiction, or whatever. Um, but um, things like fairy tales that were originally written for a much older age group, you can find a variety of versions of this. So as you begin to look at all of these different ways, like um, that there is no way for your student to do a self-directing reading and pick one of these if they haven't been exposed to it, right? Well, they're not going to pick poetry unless they've heard Dr. Seuss, <laughs> right? So um, you start with making sure that your shared reading experiences are really varied so that then, then when you realize, boy, when they're in their independent, they are, they don't know it, but they're always picking books with rhymes. So they kind of like this poetry thing or, oh, they don't really know it, but they're always picking these fairy tales. And maybe it is because PBS Kids is, did a fairy tale thing and they know these stories already. And it kind of doesn't matter. It's just like you're, 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 get, you're tapping into what their interest level is. So I just like the brainstorm on here so that you go, am I leaving a whole group of people out? Do I have any books on sports? Even though it's a preschool group and even though we have physical disabilities, what you don't know is that they are at a soccer game every Saturday because the siblings are always doing that. So thinking about not, not getting too, um, 
pigeonholed into age group, gender, um, ethnicity, anything where it's just, you feel like you're overrepresented. Um, you may feel like that that's balanced because that's the, that's the group that's in your class. But remember, most of these people have siblings and have a, a wider variety of things that they're interested in. I also liked the second slide because it talked about using like social media. And we talked last week a little bit about kind of figuring out, could you use GIFs? Could you use memes? Could you use um, different um, social media applications that um, are more common for um, teenagers and literacy. So that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. So diving into high tech or online ideas. So um, I don't know how many of you are using a virtual library. There's a great example I want to show you. Um, but also first, let's come back up here. So this is one that um, someone created. Oops, let me move my zoom here. Um, with Google Classroom, you can see. So welcome to my virtual library. So then they have this first page is um, Black History Month ideas. And you can click on the books and then it takes you out to Epic um, for this district. That's how they're accessing it. And then you can get right in to using the book. Um, so pretty neat ideas here if you scroll through. Um, in, let's go back here. In this example, this is from a school in, um, in Oregon. They have their virtual library, similar idea. So it's available here on the main webpage. So it's for all students. And um, Kind of a similar idea. You can click on different areas and it takes you to different things. But I love these ideas um, because it's just, it's fun. And then you can make it look like your library at school, or you could make it look like your speech room um, and kind of bring some familiarity in for students. Mm -hmm. But here you've got local authors, um, you've got uh, Spanish resources. So when you click on these things, it'll take you to it. So Overdrive, um, I'll just show you the Spanish resources one real quick. So then it takes you to their page of the collection of all their Spanish children's stories and um, all sorts of resources. So really good ideas here if you wanna check out, how about more books? If you wanna check out how they did it, um, if you haven't done your own. And then again, you can click on each book and it'll take you out. And they've got quite a range here too. So we've got um, different interests and reading levels, pretty fun. Um, there's lots of resources for online books with text-to-speech. You probably know many of these. Um, we just put in a few. And I will say that on March 3rd, I've put a link down here at the end. Um, Linda Daly will be doing a webinar through SETC on reading resources for all students, and she'll have even more resources available. So if you wanna look at those, um, but one that we love and we've touched on a lot, but we also have some webinars for it is Star Heel Reader. We'll just quick you quickly take you there. Um, just because it's so easy and quick and it's accessible, it takes you right there, you find a book, um, you can create a collection or favorites when you sign in, but right away you can get in and start reading a book. There's certain authors you might wanna look for, like read a book um, is um, Copenhaver. There's um, Jane Farrell has great books. You can turn on your speech. Unless you're signed in, it's automatically silent when you, when you open it up. And Wear a mask. Um, it'll read to you. Stay healthy. Wear a mask. Now, the fun no, thing about that this mask. <laughs> is when you get to the end. This, not, not that. No way. Sorry. Not it. Almost. Oh. Uh -huh. We. You. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody wear. And what. What would you like to do now? Okay. Um, 
so when you get to this book or get to the end, you can rate the book. So thinking back on our March Madness idea, um, March Book Madness, this would be kind of a fun way to do that. Book? Um, so your students can read the books independently and then do the ratings for the books. And then you can see at the end, like, well, how did we rate these? And maybe you take the top rated ones and then you start your bracket with those. Um, and it's switch accessible, which is great. So there's a lot of great things about Tar Heel Reader um, to add to your, your online library. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna stop for a minute. Um, Brenda, oops, sorry, didn't mean to stop sharing. Did you wanna talk about um, the text leveling? Yeah, I have a couple of examples from that today. Um, Let's see, but I might need you to stop sharing so I can. Okay, so here we are, books they can use with third party next to speech. So as a reminder, also, um, this will be covered in our in Linda's webinar coming up, uh, some other ones. Okay. So um, the first one is text compactor. So I just like went online and grabbed a, um, a beginning of an article about the Super Bowl and you just paste it straight in. And then you can say that you want it to contain 10% of the text to keep it in a summary. So it's a text compactor. So the whole goal of this one is just to, um, let's see, Does, is it changing on me? Okay, yeah. So let's say I wanna keep it, let's just to show you an extreme. So if I do like, I want it, I want it to be about 80% of the words above. So, you, so you'll see that it's not. So instead of today's NFL puts a premium on agile quarterbacks, it's re, it said gone are the days when a passer could stand still in the pocket. So they just skipped that sentence because it's um, not essential to, it, to the summary. But if I were to go down and say, I want this to have 25%, it's quite a bit shorter. And they've um, talk, they just basically summarize each paragraph a little bit. So what I thought it was gonna do, which was gonna be grade level and a little bit more in depth, it doesn't. So then I looked at read a word of five, but I think we may have it spelled wrong on the thing because what I'm looking at is RE word of five. Is, it, is there a different program that's read Wordify or I don't know, but this is the one that I was looking at, but if there's a third one, then we, then we should put that too. So again, um, I'm just putting in the paragraph about the Super Bowl. And then if I do rewordify the text, it's going to uh, reword some things. So I can um, use my settings to display this in a variety of ways. So I can reword hard words. I can tell it what level I want it to be. So I can do easiest words and I can tell what color I might want it highlighted in or just underlined or none if you don't want them to be distracted by the words that may have been changed. Save and close. And now you'll see that, that, that's, that that's what they've done. They've, they've changed the way I wanted it to. There's some, there's some, there are 16 hard words. How many do you want to learn? So you can pick how many you want to learn. Three, seven, or 10. If you say three, then it's going to begin your leaning unnerve. And I've unnerved means to make nervous. The next step. The is, word. A nerve means we can slash make nervous. So it reads it to them because you might think, well, if they if they're having trouble reading it, then what you know that didn't really help. And then here's the usage context. And you can have they can choose to have it read to them as well. And then they can copy it if they want to learn to spell it. Type the word, a nerve. Type the word, a nerve. So now they have to look just by hearing it do it. So there's all kinds of ways. And then if they were to have a multiple choice, how would they pick the right answer? 
So you can just keep going through this. There's a lot. These are the three words that um, unnerve buccaneers and evade. So um, let's see, if we go back to practice with flashcards, back to our learning. Oh no, how do we get back to where I was? <laughs> uh, settings, I get some. Oh no. Oh boy, let me see if I can hit the back button. So you can also do stats, like, and you can look at the lexical density, the word count, the sentence count, there's a, how many letters are in each word. So there's all kinds of data you can do if, depending on what your reading goals are. You can share your documents, you can print it so that they are reading the, um, the simplified version of it. And you can even have it color according to parts of speech. I think about all of the old school, I don't know, I'm probably older than most, but I mean, I remember us having to diagram sentences and how horrible and painful that was and how beautiful this little idea is about um, looking at parts of speech. But so when you, so when you rewordify the text, you can do it in all kinds of levels through your setting setup. So I really like this. I just signed up with my email. None of this costs me anything, so I don't know, but I know that you can also buy, you can also have a whole district be part of this. So I thought that this was a great way to take maybe, maybe a challenging, like the article I got was from the New York Times on Tom Brady and and so you know they're interested in football but that level of reading is probably not going to meet their meet their um level so but they're in, but that's what they're interested in then you can have this opportunity to use um, something that simplifies the text but keeps the topic they're interested in does anybody want to see anything in here okay but by the way, they have some embedded cla classic literature already. You can go to public documents. You can cut and paste anything from the internet. If you have figured out how to pull in print from your iBooks, you can do that. So there's a lot of options here. Great. Am I wrong that it is, is read Wordify a different one? Did I put read Wordify? Yes, because um, that was what was in the text. But I, I think that if this is all just one. I think read. it's just. This one? Oh, wait. Where are you? Oh, no, you're right. I was seeing readability. OK. Oh, OK. OK. So I'm sorry. You're right. So I don't have access to Snap and Read. Do you? No, um, but I believe that Linda will be talking about that on March 3rd in her. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, Sorry, and I, I was going to touch on that, but, um, but it does have, for, for those of you who have Snap and Read Universal, um, it has, let's see if I can get there. Here, I'm actually going to go here. Um, it has the ability to grab uh, a text and change, oop here. Um, kind of like what you were showing, like it, it will give a um, definition for a word as you're looking at it um, with this. So it has text to speech, screenshot reader, but the simplify um, is similar to what you were looking at with the other tools. Okay. Oh, that's a good one to check out. And I believe there's a free um, trial um, for it for those who are interested in. Um, Sorry, let me go back here. Okay. Um, so PowerPoint is another, so thinking about books that um, you could make with your students or um, make together as a group, you could use PowerPoint. You could do this with Tar Heel Reader. You can write a book or Pictello is another great way. And all three of these are switch accessible. Brenda, did we wanna show any of these? 
Yeah, I have a PowerPoint one that I was going to show just how I um, can create one. I just got to grab one thing. Um, Okay, so let me, oh wait, to me. Okay, oh shoot, did I lose it? Um, so as you're getting that up, um, there's a comment that for online books, I use Unite Literacy, uniteforliteracy.com. It also translates text in different languages for read aloud. Thank you. Thanks for showing or sharing. Oh, okay. It's always good when we learn something. So yeah, we'll check it out. Yeah, we'll have to add that. Mm -hmm. So what I sometimes will do is do a click to read. And um, I talked about this, oh gosh, um, about using it with um, people with apraxia that are having difficulty word, word finding due to a stroke, but it can also be a reading thing. So let me just show you. Um, let me just make sure this is going to run in its own window. Okay, so I'll show you how it works and then I'll show you how I do it. So they basically, they hit the switch and there's the words and maybe you're having them say the words inside their head, especially if they're not verbal. And then they hit the, they hit the switch again and the fly-in is like, a, oh, was that the word you said in your head, right? And then maybe there's still like, I still don't know what that is. So that if you do another click, it's going to show that there can be a clue and in another click Harry Potter it will read what I've recorded so the next click Harry Potter goes to Hogwarts so I just thought I'd show you really quickly um, how I created this um, so what you do is um, sorry I've got like pictures everywhere so I'm trying to um, I'm trying to minimize like I got to find where okay so what I do is like I have this picture Harry Potter, Potter goes to Hogwarts so here's my Hogwarts picture so what I'm going to do when I find the picture that I want is I'm going to pull it I'm going to add a fly in and that means that um the first time they hit the switch that you see the number one there it's going to fly in the picture and then what I can do with um, with the audio is I can insert an audio and record the audio. And so I'm just going to read that statement. And so I'm going to do Hogwarts. Harry Potter goes to Hogwarts school. And so then I have this that's automatically on the, on the second switch. So when I go to my slideshow, play from current slide. Now, if I click, click again, anywhere. Harry Potter goes to Hogwarts school. It doesn't highlight as it reads, but other than that, it's a pretty nice little dare step into like try to read it on your own use the use the picture context to maybe help you with a hard word and then you have that that next click that will actually complete the reading for you so that's something that's since since uh since powerpoint and google are free sometimes it's an easier way to make a book that switch accessible with um leveled reading thank you um, okay, let's go back to our document. Let's see. So looking, um, we've talked a lot about switch accessible books. So, cause we are thinking about a lot about students who, um, need different ways to access books besides maybe turning the pages or, um, or the fluffers that we talked about. So, um, there are, a lot of ways to do this. Brenda's talked about the step-by-step -step and showed us how to do that with the recurring phrases. Um, 
Do you want to talk a little bit about single message buttons? Yeah, the same idea works for a single message button, which means a button that only records one, one um, message. So you, again, if you were doing like, I have a question or I like that or, but he was still hungry. So a lot of times the re reoccurring phrase is only one button. And so um, that works for the single message button um, versus what I was showing was um, with the step-by-step -step is when the, when the reoccurring phrase is a little bit longer, you could play around with it with more multiple switch hits. Great. So we added this in here to um, just so you can look at some of these things. So as you're building your classroom library, you're going to maybe think about um, things other than books that you want to add to your library, right? So it may be that you need a switch interface for the computer because you want kids to be able to read, um, PowerPoint books with switch or Tar Heel reader, um, or you might need some switches to access. You may need those talking buttons Brenda was talking about um, or the step-by-step. -step. So this is just a little helpful guide for you as you're looking at your classroom library. Um, do we want to talk about any of these items, Brenda? I can't remember. I mean, the only one that I that I did I pump up a lot is the applicator because it's a switch interface to the iPad, and there's a lot of great books on iPad, and there's interactive books on iPad, which means that when they click it, it's read to them. So if there's independent reading time and you, they don't have a pair educator assigned to read to them or to to ensure that they understand it, maybe the initial there's levels on on those read to me books. So if you look in iBooks and you find read to me or interactive books on the iPad, those are ones that can be read to them or you can choose it to where it doesn't need where they're doing it on, the, on their own. So maybe the first time they read the book, it's read to them. And the next time they read it, you turn that feature off and they're doing some of their own reading. So applicator is one of those ones where it's just, it connects to the iPad. What I like about it is you can, you have the opportunity to set the switches to single shots. So if you have a heavy head, or a heavy hand, if you're hitting a switch and um, and you put you leave your hand or your head or your switch site laying on a switch, it will just co continue to turn the pages. Mm -hmm. And so then you're kind of stunk. So with the applicator, you can tell it to do be a single shot so the child has to lift off the switch and come back on it before it does another action. So you, you um, increase the odds of them actually reading every page or being exposed to every page because it does require a separate selection each time they are um, on a page. Great, thanks. Okay, um, I did wanna really quickly show what um, Jody shared about Unite for Literacy. And it looks awesome. This is my new favorite resource that <laughs> got added. So thank you. So um, what I love about it is just right away, it's so engaging, right? Yeah. Really great to see all the pictures. And um, if, if you don't mind sharing, do you wanna let us know, did, did you find a lot for different age or interest levels? Um, I, they all seem to be, you know, relatively emergent reader level. Um, but then I did notice that like the kind of complexity of the carrier phrase increases. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to search for that. I've only searched by like theme. Follow Your Feet by Mike McGuffey. Sorry. By language as well. So those are the only two ways I've ever searched. Uh, okay, great. This is definitely something we'll, we'll look into. But. Is this is something your district bought or do you know the cost of this? It's free. Okay, good. Yeah, that's great. And I great. know that like parents can access it because I've sent a link to the, the book. Nice have more practice with and it's they can access it as well so that I see that share the book does that go straight to email I haven't okay, done nice. it that way I just always copy the link well there's copy the link so yeah, yeah you know this is great thanks so much thanks for sharing this uh, we'll have to add that mm -hmm. okay I think that's taken us to the end of our um our list so you all have access to this March 3rd, Linda Daly is going to do her webinar on um, 
reading resources for all students. And um, if you have questions about any of this, we'll, we'll stick around for a few minutes. So thanks a lot. <laughs>